Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We've got a ton of people on already. We're at 130 some participants and uh, counting. So thank you all for being here. It's super exciting to have you all and to present what I hope will be some helpful and insightful information as you uh, navigate your way to choosing your next community and uh, making a home purchase. My name is Steve Berry. I'm the director of sales with Shea Homes. A trilogy, and I'm grateful to be joined here today by Chris Bravati, who is a homeowner at Trilogy Orlando. Welcome, Chris. Hi. Hi. A little bit about me is uh, I originally came from New York and then got married and moved to South Florida, and I was there for 40 years and uh, came to Trilogy Orlando, which was the best decision I ever made about three and a half years ago. And I love my home and I love my community and I couldn't be happier. That is fantastic. Chris, thank you so much for agreeing to spend some time with us. And uh, Chris is here as we go through uh, some of the uh, material that we have today. She's gonna uh, chime in and, and uh, share her experiences from the perspective of a homeowner um, with any of those items. Chris, so as we're going along, anything that, that uh, resonates, you know, feel free to just jump in and, and share. And then we have some time set aside at the end of the session that's specifically designated for Q&A where all the participants um, that are on will have an opportunity to ask questions directly um, to Chris. So an incredible opportunity to hear um, right from a homeowner. So I'd like to begin with a quick overview of what we'll be uh, discussing and, and unpacking today. I'll start out by sharing uh, a little bit about what we've been seeing and experiencing at our resort communities and the new home sales arena, uh, really both in 2020 and 2021. I'll talk a little bit about what we believe um, is really driving this exciting uh, spin up and demand and creating a lot of urgency in our marketplace and uh, offer some tips um, if you have questions on what you can do to uh, take advantage of that. Um, we'll take some time after that and explore some of the benefits of uh, buying new versus used. And that's really from the perspective of our homeowners and our uh, recent buyers and sort of what they share with us about why they made the decision uh, to buy at the time they did and also to buy to buy new. Um, so I, th I think that should be very helpful. And then, as I mentioned, um, at the end, we will pivot out and do a little uh, Q&A. And uh, uh, how you're going to do that is down at the uh, bottom. For many of you on, this may be your uh, you know, 100th Zoom session or it could be your first. So uh, welcome, whichever it is, you're more than welcome. It's pretty simple and easy to participate. There's a Q&A button at the bottom and that's not to be confused with the chat button, two separate buttons, but the Q&A button is the one that you will want to use to um, click and submit any questions that you have. We are joined here by another team member who's behind the scenes, Cassidy Nichols. She is our regional marketing uh, coordinator out on the East Coast. So hello, Cassidy. She is going to be behind the scenes. Um, uh, any of the questions that come in there to the extent that she can answer them and just type back, she'll do that. Um, and then she'll uh, help us sort of keep some for the end for Chris and that we can handle at the end. And then still others, she might refer out uh, specific questions that are community specific. We refer those out to the community if you need to get some help in speaking with a representative um, right at that community. But we will do our best to answer um, all the questions here today. And we're up to 177 participants, so pretty exciting. Um, if at any time during the presentation, you just want to bypass, you get so excited or have uh, overwhelming uh, urges to just go ahead and connect with one of our communities and uh, schedule an appointment, either in person or virtual. Um, I've displayed some information up on the uh, screen here. There's an 800 number you can connect directly with our online sales team. Got a fantastic group of individuals there. They're super knowledgeable about all our communities and they can help schedule an appointment for you. They can answer surface questions for sure. And then they can connect you 
with a community representative right out at one of our communities and you can engage in a virtual appointment or a uh, on-site appointment. We still have a lot of people visiting us on site. There's a little bit different uh, protocols from place to place, but we are open and doing business. And uh, we've been working very hard to uh, follow all the uh, safety protocols to keep our team members safe and our guests safe. So a lot of people are still visiting. And then also shayhome.com, you can do um, all of the uh, above that I just mentioned. So let's jump right into it. Why buy now? So what's happening in our marketplace? Why are so many people uh, making the decision to buy now? Um, I don't want to talk about 2020 anymore because I'm pretty sure everybody's <laughs> really wanted to put that in the rear view. Um, but it was just an incredibly crazy year. And, um, and, and for us and our business, uh, when we got, you know, when the pandemic came down and we got stay at home orders, I mean, we were just, um, you know, nervous. So much of our 55 plus buyer segment, they're coming to our communities from different states, uh, different cities. They're traveling to get there and it's typically on site. And of course, this is, um, you know, a high risk category. So uh, we were really scrambling on a couple of uh, different fronts to, to adapt our business, as I just mentioned, to get the protocols in place and adapt our business for how we could actually do that on-site business. And then uh, also adapting out into the realm where we are today, which are these virtual engagements. And um, it, was, it was pretty uncharted territory. We had a lot of team members that, that uh, you know, had to get up to speed on how to use the, the um, different applications and be comfortable with it. But, but um, and our guests as well, but it's just been amazing. Our guests have really jumped in. It's been incredible. We've had people visiting on site and virtually. We've had people make purchases 100% virtually. So uh, all that came down March, April is pretty tough sledding. Um, you know, sales were, were, were slowed significantly, but quickly by, by the time we hit May, we were really heading back up and sales were increasing. We hit July and we set a sales record in our division. We never sold more homes in any July. We set a historical record. And by the time we got to the end of the year, we had actually set records in five of the six months on the back half of the year. So it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, we continue to see that sort of energy and momentum and sales just continue into 2021. And um, and, you know, we hope it continues. We think it will continue. Some of the factors, um, we see some factors that, that I would call new and emerging, uh, new and emerging trends, and then, and then some that, that have persisted, um, continue to have historically low interest rates. So checked on rates today at two and three quarter percent for qualified buyers on a conforming 30-year uh, fix, and even the jumbo, which is just um, you know, ridiculous. Now we've got comfortable kind of talking about these numbers, but th they're just crazy. And uh, they offer so much purchasing power. And that has a couple implications, I think, for our, for our buyers in our segment. And uh, the most powerful one is, uh, it really is tied to item two, but it's, it's the ability to sell their homes, right? The resale market is incredible, is going nuts. Inventories are super tight, but buyers that are coming um, to buy those homes are armed with that purchasing power. And I would say in, in, our, um, in, our, in our biz, you know, most people are selling a home to get here. And then on the flip side of that coin, when they're coming out to our communities, of course, they're able to enjoy some of that purchasing power as well. And uh, typically, a, a lot of times buyers will come to us with the intention that they might um, you know, have cashed out their home and be paying all cash. But we do find um, that once they get involved in the purchase process, that many are taking uh, purchase money loans uh, just because the, um, uh, the purchase money is, is, is so cheap right now. So uh, tight resale markets, that's going on. I mean, that's a real thing. Uh, buyers have been experiencing and it's driving some other conditions. Uh, there's bidding wars out there. So I think that's impacted uh, some of the sales frenzy that we see. We definitely see buyers that are, that are coming in and wanting to purchase quicker than ever and actually wanting homes that are near complete or finished. And that's a pretty significant 
shift historically in our in our um, in our space and our buyers come in typically uh, from the time when they visit a community they might take anywhere from six months to a year before they make a purchase and that has changed dramatically people from from that first visit now are purchasing uh, within 30 days and so that's a really significant shift and we believe some of that is uh, has been fueled additionally most recently by the fact that they're putting their homes on the market and selling them really quickly and then so they're coming and wanting to actually get into one of our uh, quick move in homes or you may have heard them referred to as a designer home something that's um, uh, uh, ready to go uh, but many are also still doing um, a new build purchases where you can come in and buy the lot select your favorite floor plan and then uh, we build that home and deliver it in about six to nine uh, months uh, can i say thing, something yeah yeah absolutely. you know what i've also noticed here in trilogy orlando are the people that are have bought resales are now buying new shea homes and selling their resales because they like the newer models better Interesting. And yeah, more that's warranties that. and more guarantees. So there, there's a lot of people buying new that already live here. Yeah, we, we, I love that. That's one of the dangers when you buy in some place where they're currently still cranking out those new homes, because then you kind of move into that home and you start walking around the community, maybe with your dog or, or uh, uh, you know, six feet away from your neighbor. And, and then you start seeing these new, new things out there. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, that's, it's interesting. Yeah, um, so one of the other things done. that we wanted to hit on here, and we we think that we we're also hearing and and have been seeing is that um, uh, people are retiring sooner. So we believe that the pandemic, with the onset of the pandemic, certainly there was a, there was a group of people who maybe took early retirement and uh, left the workforce at that time. In addition, I think that the pandemic and stay at home orders and just spending time at home has really given people a lot of time to just really, really contemplate, am I in the community that I want to be? Is it, is it, you know, am I doing what I want to do? And, and should I be delaying anymore? But definitely we see that that early exit or heading to retirement sooner. And then that that um, leads me to another thing, which is that for many of them, many people that may be retiring say three even four or five years out their employers have, have you know entirely shifted to work from home so all of a sudden the door is just blown wide open on where you can go and when you can do it and that's been a significant uh limiter because uh you know for people looking to do that that's always what they're contemplating is how do i get out there and buy particularly if the market's really good, how do I get out there and buy and then have that home? And, um, but, but I'm not ready to retire yet or I have things I need to take care of. So that's something that's, uh, you know, effectively getting, getting solved in a really fantastic way for people that we believe is going on. So those are some of, that's kind of a summary of, of kind of what we've been seeing in the market. Um, if you've been communicating with anyone at the communities, you're probably going to pick up on that. It's just been extremely busy. Um, so, you know, just, just as we get through this today, if it's bouncing around your head and you're really wanting to make that visit or get that virtual appointment going, you know, I'd say don't delay because at the end of the day, all this is, um, there's so much activity happening in our community and there's, uh, such a shifting in demand for for the new builds and the uh, and the quick move-in homes that they're just going really quick, and uh, we have some communities right now that are even uh, have a waiting list where people are getting lined up on those waiting lists and just waiting for the next release to come out and um, to where they can get a home because you know honestly we're having trouble in certain areas to be able to to build them as fast and to meet that demand. Uh, so let's jump into some of the benefits of uh, new versus resale. You heard me mention before, this is really largely from, uh, you know, what we hear, what are what our members and our homeowners and our recent buyers and even guests that are in our community of why they're out looking at new homes specifically. It's certainly not a comprehensive list of things we're going to get into, but I think it really highlights some things that, that you want to be thinking of and that you want to be uh, conscious of as you're out there um, shopping and trying to identify uh, what you're going to do. Um, this slide here 
is really just all about choice. And we hear continually that, that you know, that's really what folks are looking for. In particular, many of our, many of our buyers, they've, they've bought resale homes before. They've done reservation products that, uh, projects. And so what we just hear from them is like, hey, this is my time. I want to choose my own choices. I want to get a brand new home. I don't want to have to change someone else's or live with someone else's. And, and that's just it, period. End of, end of story. Um, the first if bullet... I can jump in there for one yeah, minute. Yeah. I have, um, throughout my adult life, have always, always bought a new home never somebody else's troubles because you don't know what exists behind those walls. And I didn't want somebody else's color scheme or cabinets. I felt especially, especially being in a plus 55 community that this is my forever home. This is the last home I'm gonna buy. And at my age, I deserve everything I want. And that's exactly what I got with my Shea home. I got my open floor plan, got to pick my handles where the electrical units were going. I wanted more sliders than windows so I could have the light come in. I didn't want to wait a year to renovate and fix somebody else's home. This is my home from day one. Absolutely. And that's a, and that's exactly the uh, that's right on par with with the kind of what we hear. That's what my mom told me. She just uh, uh, moved to a 55 plus community, and she, you know, that was her thing. So like, I'm getting it. It's gonna be new. Um, so on to uh, thank you, Chris. On to uh, some of the bullet points here uh, and, and thoughts that I have related to these. So choosing your floor plan. Uh, most of our communities, you can come in, you can choose from multiple collections and floor plans at each community, all of which are, are really modern, you know, great room design floor plans, but you have a lot of flexibility on specific size, um, structural options that might be in those homes, uh, it, some of those, you know, garage extensions, things like that. So there's some flexibility um, that's built into that. You know, resale market typically once you I sort of identify the neighborhood or the community, it really gets you know pretty tricky from there because then you got to go out and see what's on the market here. Sometimes there's intense variances in, in the age of those homes, the design of those homes. Uh, there's big gaps and it can be really hard to get to the area that you want. And of course, a lot of people are coming to us for just that for the community, but you get a lot more flexibility on um, you know, how you can get it. And then also the, uh, the delivery time. So I mentioned before, uh, certain times we have quick moving homes, which you can get relatively quickly. Um, you know, sometimes it's 30 days away or 45 days away, or it's ready now. And then even if you do a new build, we still build on a relatively quick timeline, you know, roughly six to nine months to pick everything you want and get it, but you have choices as to when you want to move and get that home. And I think that's very helpful. Um, design choices, um, you know, at the end of the day, you get to make the choices and they've been, whether they're, you know, sitting there and have been picked out, they've been curated by a professional designer or you're gonna get to work with them either picking from uh, easy packages like in our design choice program that have been professionally you know, selected and curated by designers where you can just go and, and sort of pick one of those for, for folks who don't like to wade into that. And then we also have some a la carte options as well. Conversely out in the resale world and used homes, uh, you're definitely looking at saying, well, maybe we found something that, that fits perfectly, but likely you want to make some changes and that's going to uh, involve ripping some stuff out and then likely engaging a consultant and, have, and then having to have some oversight on that um, project. Uh, third one, on trend. You know, whether you're selecting a new build or a quick move-in home, you can be reasonably assured that, you know, the offerings or the selections in there, they're popular, they're current, um, you know, and, and you're not stuck with some really dated, um, <laughs> some designs, you know, that are really dated and that, that don't make you happy. And then the last one is uh, be involved. 
And I think this one's interesting, involved from start to finish, but only as involved as you really wanna be. Like uh, for those that have done renovation projects, I've, I've heard one common thing, I've had to be a project manager. I had to oversee it. I needed to ensure that the selections that I had were coming out the way that I wanted. They were being installed the way that I wanted in the right spots, all of those things. And then you're dealing with any of the uh, little nuances that come with any changes that, that hit you along the way. And, and with a new home, with Shea Homes, we do all that for you, make it incredibly simple to get it. And uh, you don't have to have that level of engagement. Uh, that team member, our designer, and the uh, field team is working tirelessly to let you know when those items are installed and make sure they're installed quickly so you can uh, relax. And actually, a lot of people during that process, they're already making friends and sometimes engaging in activities at the community. So they're just like little check-ins. And then by the time they actually get the home, they're just moving into it. And it's, it's all going good. My project manager was in constant contact with me. And it's uh, about three and a half hours from Fort Lauderdale. And I would call and say, I'm coming on such and such a date. And he would meet me here and tell me, what's been done, showing me all the progress, constantly in touch with me. And I thought that was above and beyond. I've never had a builder do that for me. So I was really impressed. That's fantastic. All right, next one here. Start enjoying from day one. This is actually, I just segued from this last slide, but you know, once again, over and over again, buyers and homeowners, they just wanna spend their time playing when they're coming to our communities, not working anymore. And I mentioned there's a unique thing that happens. A lot of them already start to develop um, relationships and connections at the community. Sometimes they're in the community. But it's, even if they don't, it's always when they've made that decision to purchase, it's with the intention to come here and get involved in the activities, to get involved in the community. They want to pick and choose some things in their home, but like from, from home goods, you know, like you furnish it, get it set up. But they don't want to spend time in any lengthy uh, remodels. And anybody who's done remodels, I always say large projects sometimes began as small projects. And then there's layers of that, you know, maybe one leads to another. And um, some pitfalls of that is you can spend considerably more time than you ever really planned uh, doing that. And of course, there's always the worry of um, some sort of cost overrun. You know, I also think I have friends that have uh, remodeled just to sell their home. So they put the money into the house without actually enjoying the house, but they don't do quality remodels. They just fix things up enough to resell, but you don't have the warranty there and it's not the best of work. So when people buy, they look and they say, oh, it's really pretty and I love how they fix the home up. And then once they get in, they find out that the quality is not quite there. And with a brand new home, you have all the warranties, you have the, the one month, the five month, the 11 month follow through, Shea will come out. And I was floored with that. It was such an added bonus. I've never had a builder follow me for almost a year. It's usually 30 days, adios. If you find a problem after 30 days, it's your own problem. Here, there's a guarantee. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a couple of things. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. There's a couple of things that you mentioned there. I'm gonna hit on the, the warranty here next, but the one thing that, uh, that I was thinking about as you were saying that is that, you know, sometimes with the resale homes, uh, I live in an area, in fact, I know folks are we're typing in where they're coming from but I'm, i live here in, in uh, california i'm currently at our trilogy at monarch dunes property and i live in san luis obispo and there's a lot of historic homes there and um they're pretty cool they're historic in fact i grew up in monterey where there's a lot of historic victorian homes and my dad used to fix them up and i always think yeah they're historic meaning they have a history when you start digging into the history of 
changes and repairs and layers of things that have been done by different uh, individuals, sometimes people that, that, you know, are just homeowners that have decided to take on projects and kind of do them a certain way. And then maybe someone's come and redone that work or, or uh, uh, gone over it. You know, there's kind of layers of that that can go on and you're not always sure what you might find there sort of the, as you start to peel those back. So it's just something that That's I thought right. of when you were talking. And then uh, you mentioned the other thing, which is which is a home warranty. So every every new Shea home uh, comes with a new home warranty in our one five eleven program, which you heard uh, Chris mention. And basically, what those are is from date of closing, their scheduled visits up one month, five months, and eleven month, where the customer service rep is coming out to the home scheduling a meeting with you. They're following up on suggested care, maintenance. They're visiting the warranty process and uh, covering all the procedures so that you know how to request any service items and, and sort of helping with all of those things. And that's what Chris was, was mentioning there. And everything that was on my punch list was fixed to my satisfaction. Fantastic. One of the things that you that uh, you're mentioning, and, and maybe people know this term, but they're called punch lists. Punch lists are common with builders, and um, uh, what they are, if, if you're not familiar with it, is that after you close on your home, sometimes builders will give you a list of all the items that weren't complete when they delivered the home. And I, in fact, bought from another builder. We'll call it Brand X. Um, uh, at a time in my life. And I remember getting such a list after I had closed on the homes. We uh, endeavor to deliver every home 100% complete. But it's normal when you deliver a new home to have fit and finish type things that, will that, that are warranty where you have to come back where, you know, little things are missing some the caulking or something pulled away where you can just kind of get that tuned up and fixed. And so it's great to have someone there, but also know that you're getting the home complete uh, out of the gate is, is huge. Um, so this is an interesting slide. I think, I think there's one, one thing that I'd like to share with everyone here. And I just think is an interesting note. Not everyone views the age gap between new homes and used homes, the way we might actually uh, view those, say, in an automobile. And um, I'm not, I, I, I think there's a lot of reasons for that, I guess. I mentioned uh, some, some historic type properties and things, but you know, a 30 year gap, like in an automobile, there is a significant gap between what a 1990, uh, what came in a 1990 car and what is in a 2021. And homes are subject to the same types of things. I mean, they suffer wear and tear over time from owners, from the elements, uh, materials, just simply age. And when they do, like we mentioned before, you're not sure if they've been maintained or how they're replaced. Uh, technologies change both in the construction and uh, convenience related items. Um, you know, when I think of cars, I just think of, you know, all the modern conveniences that are in cars and how different um, they would drive, you know, just in that short a, a time frame. But we tend to not think of homes um, that exact way. Um, and it's, and it, it's kind of interesting when you do. And then sometimes we even think about like, oh, the home was built in 1990. Like that seems relatively new. That's a 30 year gap from something that's being uh you know, sold today. So uh, something to think about, and this hits on it here, is just the fact that there's updating, updated building processes and materials, you know, and a new home construction are likely more advanced and energy efficient when compared to materials used in older homes. And of course, that's going to vary depending on the age of the, the resale and what's been done to it. But it's something to be really aware of you know, because it because it, it really affects all these components and systems. Um, and I made a list of them, a quick list of them, you know, off the top of my head here, plumbing systems, you know, you're looking at for efficiency, water savings, convenience, pull out uh, faucets and things like that, heating systems, savings and comfort, cabinets, flooring, countertops, 
uh, performance of those materials and the ease of maintenance and convenience that comes with those materials. I mean, radically different uh, stuff that, that you know, has changed there in terms of the types of materials of what's uh, used today versus uh, what was used previously. Windows, doors, hardware, uh, those all have energy efficiency uh, uh, implications. Uh, maintenance, ease of maintenance on windows, um, uh, dramatic differences there when you go to start cleaning the inside and outside of windows. Um, it could make a big difference. Insulation, exterior finishes, roofing, you know, performance and durability. And then of course appliances, which are like going at, at light speed, like even really basic appliances now, uh, when you get into it, do a, such a better job in terms of efficiency and performance. And then you get out and we're gonna explore this a little bit later into smart appliances, which can do really great stuff. Like, you know, once it's done cooking your turkey, you know, it will, uh, you know, go to a warming mode because it knows it's done when you've got it, you know, plugged in and wired right there. So a lot of things um, to consider. A couple other thoughts I had, you know, things that are wired for technology. I think this has become really prevalent now that everybody is trying to uh, work from home. And I know I myself joke with my coworkers because I'm in my living room and it's like, I always got to be close to a plug and trying to get some good lighting or get some good space. And it's like, there's never enough, um, you know, wiring plugs and, uh, and sometimes the internet is a little weak in spots. So just a wiring for, for, you know, latest technology, state-of-the-art Wi-Fi and things like that, where you're not having to retrofit it. And then, um, and then one other thing I think about is just the modern design. Floor plan designs have come such a long way where you're able to, um, you know, just have modern concepts, design trends, open spaces, large kitchens, huge closets, things like that can make a big difference. Any additional thoughts here, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, the technology is so much better. My old house was 26 years old and I can tell the difference, but I do love my layout, like you said, with open kitchens, gas heating, lots of natural light coming in. And we do have a lot of um, electrical outlets because everything nowadays has to be plugged in and the closet space is unbelievable. So it gives you plenty of storage within the home and my electric prices have not been bad at all. I mean, our prices have really been good. I'm very surprised, but I guess the windows are energy efficient windows compared to my old home, which is 26 years old, much better. So my bills are lower. Yeah, win windows are a good thing. And that's another good tip for folks on to really wait into windows because they've, they've been, you know, so many changes there um, that have happened to windows over time, but they continue to improve on even, you know, a lot of people think of just like a vinyl frame, low E window as sort of being, you know, and then uh, uh, comparing it against like a traditional, like a single pane, but now with different glazings, and I think they have like low E3, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of difference in terms of the efficiency, the quality, the ease of use and all those things just continues to evolve. So good things to, to keep in mind. And I think, you know, before we move off this slide, I just said, just remember, there's a lot of systems here that are going into these homes and, and uh, you want to kind of think through them, through them all when you're, when you're weighing it out. And also like when I was in my last home, we had to uh, get like an alarm system and they had to go through the attic and go through the insulation. It's all done here. The alarm came with the house. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, they were they were probably they were probably wiring it now. I think like uh, many of them are, are have far less hard wiring than necessary. Yeah, we're gonna hit on uh, we're gonna hit on some safety and convenience features here. This slide um, is all about Shea Connect, smart home, smart choice. Shea Connect is a suite. Uh, smart home features that are included in our new homes or Shea Connect homes. And so all Shea Connect homes come with a standard set of smart features with some additional um, upgrades that you can put on them that sort of vary from market to market. Um, we partner with name brands to build uh, quality, you know, right into the package. 
Um, it includes a Euro Wi-Fi router, which uh, Euro features uh, multiple access points uh, that help you deliver a really strong Wi-Fi signal to all the different areas of the home. Amazon Echo Show, uh, which is a smart speaker that's video enabled, but essentially it allows you to communicate with your voice via to a lot of other um, a lot of other smart devices in your home uh, that are that we're going to cover here. A Ring Ring Video Doorbell Elite. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Ring. It's been super popular. Uh, a lot of folks uh, attempt to you know put these in their own homes, but it lets you see who's at your front door, whether you're home or away. Um, Genie and LiftMaster uh, included a garage door opener. So I'm really guilty of this one when I leave home and sometimes have to drive around the block because I'm absolutely certain that I didn't uh, close the garage door. Particularly when going on a long trip, that seems to be really prevalent. Well, you can check on it, you can close it remotely. You can let someone in, potentially let someone in if you had a large package or something to be delivered there. So you can do that all remotely. Control it from your phone. Uh, Honeywell Pro uh, Smart Thermostat, very similar. You can program it or do manual adjustments remotely. Uh, quick set or Kivo electronic locks on the front door. Those are coded keypads. So you can create custom codes. Um, you can still use a key for those who like uh, keys, but, but if you lose the key, you can also use the code. You can share those codes with others um, if they need to get in. Uh, and you can control that um, from your phone or some other device. Um, iDevices wall switch allows you to um, control lighting devices in your home uh, via a voice enabled speaker or a hub. And that's uh, something people really like. Uh, Cat6 wiring. So we've moved on from what was typically an industry standard Cat5, Cat6 structured cabling, which basically gives you all the cabling in your home like we hit on earlier from which to go and either, you know, start with something like Shea Connect and build onto it or, um, you know, just have wiring in your home. In older homes, sometimes you just don't have that benefit. And then uh, we tie all this out with a white glove um, service. So one of, the, one of the big concerns for a lot of folks is like, hey, this is great. We get all this good stuff. But can I, how do I get it set up and will it be working? So we have um, a, a, a system in place, white glove service. So once you uh, buy your home, close on your home, move into your home, they'll visit you and help make sure everything is set up and going so you're ready to go. Any thoughts here on any of these things, Chris? I know, I, I believe you a bought lot of us offering Shade Connect, but you may have some of these I don't. I don't. I moved in in 2017, so I don't have the ring and I don't have the smart house, but I'm happy with what I have, but I can't believe the rate of technology that in just three years, so much has improved already. Yeah, it goes fast. <laughs> it does. Whether we like it or not, my kids are certainly good at it. Well, the good news is you have a new home. So some of that stuff like the, the structured wiring and things like that, most of the things you're gonna have in place where you can build onto this very easy. I think that's the really tricky thing with resales, exactly how old they are and sort of uh, getting that functionality and then, and, then, um, and then being able to get that Wi-Fi signal really working well throughout the whole house. Could be yes, key. I have no problem with my Wi-Fi. Okay, so that, that moves us on to our um, Q&A. Chris, thanks for taking um, you know, time to share your thoughts. And as we went through there, I'm gonna pop open um, my Q&A here and see if we can swing it over. And uh, let's see if we got something for you. Got some lengthy ones here, so bear with me. It's okay. So here's one from Mark. Um, this person just, uh, Mark visited uh, Trilogy Orlando and he's wondering, he said to have limited lots left. Any plans on increasing for the future? Um, not at this time. 
uh, Mark, but uh, one of the things that I would I would recommend for sure is to get in touch with the community there because there is a there is a good um, selection there. I was just reviewing with the sales manager there, and I think there's uh, there's some good stuff out there. We don't have any current plans to increase at that community uh, at this time. Um, and then, but the lots are beautiful. I've seen a lot of the empty lots that are available in the designer homes. And it's a wonderful community to live in. So, Mark, you might want to move here as quick as possible. I live here, <laughs> having a great life. Awesome. He's got his question was a two part question. He's also asking um, when will the homeowner be responsible for HOA fees when they move in or when they initially sign the agreement to build the home? And so, HOA fees. Um, or not, you're not paying HOA fees until you close on the home. And it covers here in Orlando. I don't know about the other um, facilities, but we have our uh, phone, our internet, our Wi-Fi, our grass maintenance, and all the common areas are included in that HOA bill. So you do get bang for your bucks. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just peeling through them here. Uh, some of these, uh, Pat, uh, North Carolina, does it have gas appliances? I'm unsure. You could probably get that answered pretty quickly. Um, uh, just going right, right through the uh, 800 number there. I just contact the community. I don't want to err. I don't. I don't want to tell you they do and they don't. Um, See what else is here. Is there a virtual home tour plan for today discussing the price points and design uh, levels? Uh, Bill, this is uh, just designed to be sort of a global overview on, you know, share what some of the things we've seen in the market and, and tackle the topics that we have here today. We do have at a community level um, virtual home tour and presentations like that. And then one of the other things you can do that I really encourage everyone to do is just um, dial the 800 number, connect with one of the community representatives, and they'll give you that tour where they're sitting on site. They can uh, take you through the plans in a really detailed way. We've got Matterport tours. They can actually take, um, you know, if you can FaceTime or go out with them into some of the model homes. There's quite a bit that they can demonstrate. We've got really great people. So, um, you know, please reach out and they can uh, jump in. Help and if you out. come to Trilogy Orlando, I'll personally give you a tour. So uh, here's a question on Shea Connect. Shea, Shea Connect's included at no extra cost. Does this mean you install an alarm system at no extra cost? It is not an alarm system. Uh, and so it doesn't have sensors for all windows. That would be uh, something separate. And then in terms of an alarm company, that probably varies from community to community since we're in multiple states. In fact, a lot of security, a lot of type security features are just done by, by homeowners on their own through um, pay-as-you-go type services. Well, here in Trilogy Orlando, I know I have my tech and we do have a security alarm and it was included in the home. We've got a lot of uh, more community. Uh, here's a compliment for you. I just want to say Chris's input was uh, excellent. Thank you for that. Um, John asked, can you, uh, can you rent these? Um, that may be possible. Once again, that's kind of a community community thing. Um, you really want to reach out to the community and find out details because there's different um, uh, limitations on that for various different communities. You may also want to do a test drive, which is like a two night, three day stay here. And you can see what the community is about while you're actually uh, enjoying the activities that are going on for those few days. So you can call the different communities and see if they have any test drives available. Here's a couple of good ones. Here's a couple of good ones for you, Chris. Um, this person asks, when I drove through some of the communities in Florida, I was a little surprised to see not many people walking around or biking around. Do the communities get very quiet 
And also, uh, is there tennis at Trilogy? I think we have seven tennis and pickleball courts. We have a walking path, we have bike clubs, we are walking constantly and especially with COVID, it was nice to see so many people out. So we don't roll up the streets and stay quiet throughout the day or evening. We are very active here. Yeah, yeah, I was curious about that because the, the times I've been there, it's just been extremely busy. So I don't, I don't know if that, um, maybe they came during the pandemic. Um, there's another question. Let's see, here's another one uh, for Chris. I'm look, or no, this is for, uh, this person is looking in South Carolina or North Carolina, what communities do you have available? I'm very interested in North Carolina. Uh, can you give me some more information, please? So uh, Trilogy at Lake Norman is a beautiful community in North Carolina. You can go to shayhomes.com. There's a ton of info there. And as I mentioned before, you can hop on the 800 number and book a virtual tour or an appointment or an appointment uh, to, uh, on site to go out and see someone. But absolutely fantastic community. And in fact, Cassidy that's on helping us is out in North Carolina and she spends a lot of time there. And uh, if you live in any trilogy, there's something called My Trilogy Life and it is a website and they have video classes for you and you can see them from any trilogy. They're re pre-recorded and live and you've got uh, cooking classes, exercise classes, wellness classes and you can log into any of the trilogies to see those classes. Absolutely. Uh, here's one at Trilogy Monarch Dunes. Uh, how many lots are released in each release and how are the release and how often are the release dates for new lots? So there's a little bit of a variance there. So be once again, you know, contact the community, speak with the community representative. The key with lot releases and in and right now in the current environment is to express your interest early, connect with your community representative, let them know what your timing is, get pre-qualified so that they can keep you up to speed on what's going on there. There's a lot of different reasons why sometimes we can, we can uh, bring lots uh, forward and offer them out to market and, and some, some reasons why we can't. And that's, that's pretty fluid. Um, but the main thing to be able to be, you know, get a lot that you want is to make sure they, they know that you're interested, get pre-qualified and get on one of their lists and then keep in touch with them. And they're usually pretty good at keeping you abreast of when those lots come on and how to, um, how to get one. Uh, here's one we're currently looking at Trilogy. Oops, sorry, these bounce away because new ones come in. I lost it. Let's see. This person's looking at Polo Club and asking, uh, do we have other any other communities in SoCal on the way? Not at this time. However, uh, if you're familiar, Shea Homes is a Southern California based uh, company. We love that area. Uh, Trilogy, before Trilogy Polo Club, we had Trilogy La Quinta out in the desert. Um, there is exciting news always afoot and coming for, for uh, SoCal regions. So, um, you know, stay in tune, stay in close contact with our website. And uh, when we get when we get something going, you'll see it go right up there. Let's see. Um, Lee asks, you know, if I buy a 55 plus home, I'm worried about when I pass away, my adult daughter's trying to sell it. Has anyone seen a pattern on resale and 55 plus and can they live there while packing me up and trying to sell it? So that's, that's another, I, I've never seen in my experience, um, you know, both, both the new homes and resales within the community, that market will always be very good. So there's uh, different restrictions on how um, uh, people under the age of 55 and family members can occupy their home and for what periods of time. It's community-based. But uh, one of the things that I'd recommend here, Lee, would be uh, to visit your community of choice and then speak with uh, one of our member lifestyle ambassadors, basically homeowners, that spend a lot of our time, you know, sharing their experiences, and you could probably get a feel 
uh, for others that, that have maybe gone through something similar or have had a similar concern. Uh, here's one that asks about HOA fees and if they go up and by how much approximately. So most HOA fees are capped. And typically, typically in our communities, we have really good history of not having really uh, radical spikes in HOA fees. So once again, you know, jump in on a community basis, dig in with your community representative on what those HOA fees cover how they're capped, and then also you can usually get a pretty good feel for what the history has been. A lot of our communities have some built-in um, uh, uh, buffers and things like that to guard against that. So it's important that you understand all those. But in general, the track record, uh, one of the concerns I hear with HOA fees, you know, and I always heard when I sold is that, you know, I live someplace and then they, and then they changed radically and um, that's usually due, I think, to poor oversight and poor planning at the front end or was something that we that should have been planned for, wasn't added on and then got added in and created that spike. Um, Robert asked with COVID issues, how are you doing virtual design tours to outfit the homes during the build process? Um, you know, I would just say, I would say very well, I think, I think so many of the uh, of, of you know the things that we've been forced into and having to do things virtually are so much better than we ever thought they would be. Um, there are ways where you can uh, sometimes see materials in different areas, and materials can be sent to you, and you can go through things. Um, uh, a lot of times, I think people might might actually visit the community to finalize those. But once again, you can find out more by contacting the community, speaking with a representative, and getting into specifics about exactly how they're conducting them. I've had to do it a lot of different ways to to accommodate you know all the different needs that are out there. Uh, any future plans to open trilogy communities in Europe? I do not believe so. Uh, Georgia, I don't believe so, but never say never. Uh, here's a good question. What's the main difference between Shea and other builders like uh, Toll Brothers? You know, I think one of the, the main defining factors when I think of Shea Homes, Shea, Shea Homes is a privately run family owned builder, They've been around for a really long time, have an incredible track record of quality. There's other great builders out there, uh, Toll Brothers, I would consider one. Um, but I think it's really a matter of, of kind of hopping into the market, doing your research, visiting those places, and kind of uh, getting a feel for what they build, what you like, and who that builder is. But a defining thing is Shea, a privately owned, family run uh, company to this day. Um, very, very unique uh, and a very good track record. They stand behind their product. Uh, 800 number, someone's asking for the 800 number. I'm gonna flip that up for them because it's on our next slide. So there's your 800 number. Let's see what else is in here. Um, this is uh, someone is asking about temperatures in AZ and someone else has answered it. Uh, temperatures in the summer out in Arizona can be can be pretty toasty. People have spend most of that time in the pool and in air conditioned space. There's a lot of great spaces out there on the desert. Uh, you're talking to someone here who grew up on the central coast of California. I spent some time in Palm Springs. Um, my family always asked me how I made it through those summers. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is uh, uh, the comfort of air conditioning. I think one thing that people uh, sort of overestimate is exactly how much time you're spending outside and how you're spending it. I spent a lot of time playing golf and riding a bike. I was able to do those things in the early morning and the late evening it was incredibly comfortable. And, uh, and then a lot of spaces, you have indoor outdoor spaces that are misted and, and uh, pool areas and things like that. 
And uh, maybe you can con you can comment on that, Chris, because you know it's pretty toasty there too. And I know a lot yeah, of yeah here in Florida as well. But um, we have tile, so it pretty much keeps the home cool. Air condition bills aren't exorbitant, but we do tend to go up to the grill and have a nice drink and hang around the pool and do indoor activities. And even during COVID, we were able to use the pool. We were only closed, I think, from March until May. And then things started opening up and the pool was nice and sit outside and enjoy time with your friends, six feet apart. But it was, it was perfect. It really was. I don't feel like Trilogy suffered at all, especially our area. It's the people that live here that make it. And we kept in contact with all the ones that we wanted to, our friends, and we felt we were in our little bubble. And when we make appointments to go to the pool, we'd go with our friends and it all turned out great. Fantastic. Yeah, I think there's a, uh, one of the one of the best things you can do, and Chris, you mentioned this earlier, and thanks for bringing it up, and I'll share it with everyone here, is a lot of the communities have a discovery stay program, and and uh, to some extent that's that's been hampered by the pandemic, but we do have some of them up and and going in certain areas, and there are ways you can visit and spend time at the community, so we can work to curate those those visits for you, so that uh, we stay within the health and safety protocols. But it's a great way to make those visits and then really get a feel, you know, a couple of days of what that what that weather would be like there and what the community is like. Um, just a couple more questions here. Could you this says, uh, you know, what are some of the benefits and services that are included in the HOAs? Once again, varies by community to community. Some communities are gated. Others are not. Uh, like Monarch Dunes that I'm here at today does not have, uh, is not a guard gated community. Uh, but typically the HOAs uh, cover any, any sort of gates if they um, are there at the community. And then typically front yard landscaping and then landscaping in the common areas, but not in all cases. So once again, varies a little bit from community to community. I think that's it. I think we got it. We got it lit. Guys, I know there's a lot of questions here that are really specific to the communities. I've got our uh, final slide up. Uh, Cassidy, thanks for all of your help. Chris, thanks oh, so much my pleasure. for this and thanks for your help. Um, you know, I just share, if you're at home, you're thinking about making the move, um, you know, take the first step, dial the 800 number, call in, book a private appointment. The virtual appointments are good. We have fantastic uh, team members. We have a lot of trilogies all across the nation. So some of the questions I know are really specific about those communities and it's best to talk to them. I don't want to give you any misinformation, but connect with one of those team members. They'll take you through a virtual uh, appointment just like this. You can meet them and uh, they can answer all of your questions. There's an incredible amount that you can do in the virtual engagement. I mentioned it before. We've had people that have just like bought the you know, the whole thing, top to bottom, uh, virtually. And uh, we've, we've got some more uh, info sessions planned. So we we'll look forward to seeing you there. I just have one last thing to say that I have a friend that bought here, sight unseen, just by looking at my Facebook pictures and seeing how much fun I was having. <laughs> she picked out the model online and I picked out her lot. And she's been living here two years now and doesn't regret it at all bought it before even stepping on the property. So cool. So it is, it's amazing living in a, in a trilogy environment with Shea Holmes. Happy to hear it. I know it is. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Cassidy. You're welcome. We'll see you next time.